Do you sometimes ever sit there and just think, why am I so freaking serious? Do you feel like you've completely forgotten how just to let go and have fun and have a laugh? If so, this podcast is for you. Welcome to Empower Coaching. Empower Coaching combines mental and physical fitness to help you connect the dots to unveil a more confident, energized and empowered version of you. So if you're ready, let's get into today's episode. Hello everyone. Oh my gosh, it has been a hot minute, year, I don't know, a while (laughs) since my last podcast. Um, So Obviously now this podcast is also being uh, hosted on different sites, what with Google Podcasts going, RIP. So there might be some new listeners here coming in from different places, especially YouTube, right? So first of all, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself because it has been a while if you haven't already listened to the previous podcast. So my name is Emma and I am a health and mindset coach. I am originally from the UK. However, I moved to Bangkok, Thailand three years ago and my word, has it been quite an experience. You can listen back to other podcasts to get the full lowdown on that, but just to put things very quickly, I basically came here uh, with someone. I then ended up separating after about a year, and then I have been navigating this incredible city for the past two years completely solo on my own, a point in which many people were telling me, Emma, go home. And I said, no, because I freaking love it here, and let's compare it to the UK there's so many incredible benefits and it has also completely opened up my world opportunities and experiences since being here so it really has been an incredible decision so that's really like the quick kind of lowdown um but I just want to get straight into this episode because it's been a while I finally figured out how to fix my freaking laptop that broke and uh, also the application that was on there to record Oh, it's a long story. You don't need to know. But anyway, here we are. I'm back and I'm able to do these podcasts once again for you, which I'm super excited about. So today I want to discuss the act of play. This is your reminder to play. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I don't know how old you are. Okay, I've got various different listeners that come in from anywhere teens all the way up to 50s 60s so you could be anywhere within there but I think everyone experiences that time in their life where things just kind of go on autopilot right and you get stuck in this kind of cycle of you wake up you go to work you come home you go to sleep you wake up you go to work you come home you go to sleep now this is even more of a problem if you are an incredibly ambitious person and you put your career first because everything else kind of goes on the back burner when it comes to that kind of a goal, right? Where your goal is really just all about your career. And I personally think that that's an incredible place to be in. So I'm not knocking that whatsoever. But the thing that I struggled with myself when I was back in the UK and also one of the things that many of my clients who I work with now struggle with the most is just forgetting how to play because everything becomes about work, work, work. And unless you are an incredibly lucky individual where you do not experience any stress with your work, then unfortunately you are going to experience all these other things that many of us do where we get burnt out at times because maybe we miss the signs. Um, We don't make time for self-care and just for time out, you know. We don't make time for socialising necessarily. It all really becomes about the work and, and the career and that being your laser focus. And, you know, for some people that might only be for a couple of months and they manage their time around that. And for others, it might just be that that's literally their life goal and that is what they spend their entire time doing and focusing on. This is really great, but when it becomes a problem is when it really takes over your life and pulls away from other priorities and other things. As a basic human need, there are certain things that we have to do in order to be able to feel like we are satisfied 
with life and this is often the case where a lot of people they will work 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 towards their career goals they'll get there and they still won't feel satisfied because they're still missing something right because it's literally all just work 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 and they don't know how to balance themselves out So the problem with that then is that it can lead us into this kind of state of a depression or just feeling really dissatisfied with life. And like I said, then the goal is really just what's the point, right? It can also lead some people to feeling lonely and experiencing loneliness because for many, they end up kind of sacrificing their social life in order to you know, get work done or prioritise work over over social life. So this kind of reminder to play can really help with that, not just in the sense of when you've just been work, 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 and you need to break out from that um, to feel like satisfied and content again, but also it, this is really good for anyone who is going through a depressive cycle and you're you're finding yourself just incredibly alone, not really having like the answer or understanding of how to navigate out of that. Play can really help with that. And if you're in a depressive cycle, you might also experience loneliness. So a lot of play can help with that as well because it tends to generally, doesn't always, but most of the time, generally um, it's a team activity or something that you would be doing with others and so it kind of feeds into your social recharge as well and therefore helping with feelings of loneliness. I am just going to say right now if you can hear things in the background my neighbour has decided to do some drilling today the one day that I decided that I would actually record a podcast so (laughs) hopefully it's only small and you're not going to hear it so much but that is what's going on if that does pop up. So what do I actually mean about play like what does that mean what is play it's really anything that brings about that sense of feeling like a kid again almost and we're not talking like in an immature way it's not like you have to go back to feeling like you're you know a nine-year-old kid right it's just anything that really helps you to loosen up to be creative and to just have fun and that's going to look very different for different people, which is why it's super important that you get into, when, when you're getting into this kind of idea of how to incorporate play into your routine, into your daily life, that you have a sense of just kind of like being open and, and seeing and, and discovering what that is for you. And that's super fun in itself. There's also got to be an element of relearning okay because let's say you're finding things or for example classes let's say a dance class right you're finding these things that are kind of sparking a little bit of a glimmer inside of you a glimmer is like the opposite of a trigger a trigger is something that will trigger something negative like it might trigger um you know a state of anger or a state of sadness a glimmer is something that Uh, promotes a state of happiness or fulfillment or joy at least that's how I use these terms in my podcasts so you're looking for something that sparks a glimmer right and let's say it's a dance class just to keep this simple right you might be thinking about it but then holding yourself back because you're like well I haven't got a freaking clue if I'm going to actually be any good at this and maybe you think that you're going to really suck at it and you don't really want to feel like that might make you feel really uncomfortable and so you decide not to go ahead and book the class. What we have to do is we have to really be open to learning again, right? And to to really sucking at something and being okay about it because when you're learning anything for the first time, unless you're super lucky, It might just be that you're going to really suck at first, okay? And that is okay, because that's why you're there. You're there to learn, okay? People who learn to play guitar, right? They don't get it straight away in the first... Well, some people might. If if you're one of those, congrats. But some people, like myself, you know, it might take weeks and weeks, maybe even months before you can actually put something together that sounds decent, So you're not necessarily going to nail it straight away. And that might be how it is in any of these 
uh, fun promoting activities that you're going to search for. So it's being open to learn again um, and almost kind of like going back to school, you know, doing whatever you have to do in order to be able to learn. But the biggest thing, which I think a lot of people really struggle with, is letting go of the ego. And I think this is harder for people who are in career positions, like I'm talking managers, executives, professionals, right? People who have to spend the majority of their day with a very kind of serious, personality right where they have to have this uh, certain way about them that it, that is very uh, serious right and they want people to perceive them as being a serious character or whatever because they believe that then they're going to be trusted and respected if you go into a dance class with that same kind of attitude and way about yourself and how you hold yourself the chances of you sucking at that it's going to be much greater right so sometimes you have to just be open to just being silly or just accepting that you might look like a fool or you might feel like a fool because most people don't think if you can't do a dance class well they're not going to look at you and be like oh my god have you seen that fool right they're just going to appreciate the fact that you're there and that you're learning and that you're new but you might feel like a fool and this could really hit into your confidence and your pride. And that is your ego taking over, right? Where it's kind of saying, oh, you look like an idiot. So we should probably stop this right now. And never come back ever again. We have to let go of that. We have to really just shake it off and let go of it. And appreciate that this time of play is completely different to your time of work. And that's exactly why you're doing it, because we're trying to find that balance. We're trying to balance out this work, work, work mentality, right? It's going to be difficult for sure if you haven't done this or you're not kind of used to or familiar with it. And that's where you have to kind of be consistent because you might not necessarily get it in one class, okay? Your ego might hold on to you for a couple of classes before you can fully let go. But it's it's really just being open to exploring that and the idea of being okay with just letting go and putting yourself out there okay and understanding and accepting that you might absolutely suck and completely mess it up but that's okay the other thing is that over the years you know you might have completely changed in terms of what you find fulfilling or or what you find joy in or what you find passionate so that's another thing to really stay open to is new experiences and exploring what you might actually enjoy because that might have changed right let's say 10 years ago you participated in um oh come on off the top of my head why can't I think um an aerobics class I don't know why I said that but here we go we're rolling with it uh it's it was an aerobics class and you absolutely loved it right the thought of it right now might just be like oh aerobics yeah I don't really want to do that you know you might not really find that glimmer for aerobics anymore maybe it's become a trigger I don't know maybe something happened right so it's really kind of exploring new experiences as well and discovering what you might now enjoy And this is so much fun in itself because this is really your kind of discovery stage, right? So what that might look like is you might look at local classes in your area. It might be art classes. It might be drama classes. It might be singing classes. um, It might be rock climbing, anything, horse riding, whatever. You might have a look at these things and you could take a note of all the ones that really kind of speak to you or that get you feeling a little bit excited about doing. And then you would write those down and then you would just commit yourself to trying just one class. Most places will do some form of a trial class, right? Or a trial period. And you just make the most of that and you literally hop around all these different things that are really kind of speaking to you and you have a go at trialing them all out. Let me tell you, it is so fun doing it, unless you come across something that 
is really traumatic and actually it was an awful experience and you never want to do again but that's quite rare for the majority you'll have a go at trying something new and even if you decide that you don't like it it's the fact of just doing something new on your weekend or your evening okay so so that in itself is super super fun but it also gives you an opportunity to find out things that you maybe don't even know about yourself me for example I recently signed up for acting classes and oh my god like (laughs) I had a lot of fear about this but I was feeling these glimmers I was feeling this sense of like excitement and joy every time I thought about it so I was like okay I need to lean into that so I decided to sign up for it now I'm, I'm not gonna lie when it came to the day of the class I was absolutely shit in it I was like oh my god what have I done why did I why did I do this why have I signed up for it but you know I was deep in there and I had to go along so I showed up I showed my face and it was it was tough it was very very challenging because it was asking a lot of me in terms of my confidence which is something that I struggled with for many many years and social anxiety something that I still struggle with um, and self-belief and all these kind of things that I've continued to work through but new experiences that come up will always challenge those once again and then it's kind of you know you start in the process again of, of working through that and I would have never ever done this like let's say three years ago back in the UK I would have never thought to explore acting classes because my memory of acting when I was younger at school was not a good one in fact it was probably first when I realized that I had um, problems with anxiety so for me to kind of go into this was really exploring and I found out something new about myself because it was horrific the first hour or so but after the class I felt really rejuvenated and recharged and really excited about the next class and what I can learn from this and I learned something new about myself I learned that I actually really enjoy acting so I would have never known that another example two years ago oh was it three years ago now can't remember but I signed up for singing lessons now I've always enjoyed singing to an extent but again I never really pushed it you know I was a shower singer right or when I was younger I would sing in front of my family at Christmas get-togethers you know that kind of thing car singing don't tell me you don't car sing I think everyone does that right I actually miss that about not driving out here but anyway it was something that again it, it sparked a little glimmer so I was like let's give it a go and then I found out that I really enjoy singing again you know because I hadn't properly done it for so long um and and there's just so many different activities out there okay I've never I've never actually been to an art class so who knows if I go along to that I might find that I really enjoy that but this is what I'm talking about you don't know what you do and what you don't like until you try it so that's really what this discovery Uh, stage is all about it's just trying things that spark a little bit of joy go along see how it goes do you enjoy it and do you not and then you stick with the ones that you really enjoy and that's where you start to learn more and more about yourself and also your skills because if you've never challenged those specific skills then how do you know that you're good or not at something so that's another thing you might learn that you have this hidden talent that you never knew about because you never explored it this is your chance to do that. You could be the next winning X Factor contestant and you don't even know it if you've never tried singing classes. You never know, you never know. (laughs) So that's where the beauty of just this kind of exploration stage is all about. Once you've found that thing that you really enjoy and that you get excited about doing again, that's when you have to then start applying this into your schedule because consistency is key throughout just everything in life and it really does play true to this also like I said you're not necessarily going to nail something in the first class right so you might come away from something maybe feeling a little bit crappy or a bit disheartened that you didn't quite do a good job or as you really hoped that you would do But if it's something that you really enjoyed, then stick at it. 
and keep going because if you enjoyed it in that moment then that is your play that is your play time and what a lot of people forget to do or where they really trip up is that they forget to then schedule it into their regular routine and this is how we lose ourselves in the first place because again it's work 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 it takes priority and everything else gets pushed back but if you keep doing that it will eventually lead you into that depressive cycle of feeling dissatisfied with something or whatever it might be so it's really important that if you want to keep this going you've got to remember to schedule it in just like anything else right if you schedule in a doctor's appointment you're not going to miss it because it's important you're let's say you're going to schedule in a a one-on-one with a client you're not going to miss that because that's your work and it's important so it's reminding yourself that play is important that it holds so many benefits to your mental health and well-being and therefore really in the long term your progress and ability to perform at your best at work as well you know the, the two play hand in hand so schedule it into your routine as you would anything else let's say you found a class that happened to be on a thursday evening right block it out in your schedule and prioritize it as well don't then come to it when someone's asking you about your availability and look at your schedule and go on actually okay yeah i'll fit you in on a thursday night and then delete you know your time of playing and your time out unless of course you know it really is important and and there really is no way around it but at the very least you know try and find and slot in whatever that thing might be that's come up around your time of play because we're probably talking maybe one hour a week two hours maybe if you've got to do a little bit of time traveling before and whatever so prioritize it and then you're going to stick to it and then over time that's when you reap the benefits from it So let's do a little bit of a recap then about this, about your reminder to play and how to do that. There's really like five kind of steps to this. Number one, be open. Be open to learning, to doing something different and to really just sucking. (laughs) Number two, explore and have fun with that. This is your discovery stage. This is where you find out things about yourself that you never previously knew. This is where you get to just try lots of different things, right? It's like going into the pick and mix store, having a little bit of everything or going for your tapas, whatever you're relating to right now with that and trying a little bit of everything and seeing what it is that you really enjoy. Number three, let go. Let go of your ego. Let go of that serious head that you've got on. This is not a time for it. Save that for when you're in work mode, okay? You can be badass bitch mode whenever you want but in your time of play the ego has to take a step to the side and allow for you just to completely loosen up and just be how you gotta be in that moment number four acceptance accept that you're gonna suck okay it's probably gonna happen that first class or whatever it might be might not be so good so accept that you're not going to be the best person in the room, accept that you're not going to be skilled straight away necessarily and just go in there with whatever you've got and just give it your best and understand that it's a learning process. You're supposed to suck at first because the whole point of it is to get better and better over time. And then number five is to schedule, to make sure that it becomes a regular activity and that you don't just go back to square one of not having time for play and then just work, work, work. So if this is going to be something that you, that is sustainable and consistent with, that is then therefore over time going to have a benefit and a positive effect on your mental well-being and everything that comes off that, you have to schedule it, you have to make it a priority. So there we go. That is your reminder to go out there and have fun and play. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If this is related to you in some way and you feel like sharing it, please do. Let's help to spread this message around to others who might be in a similar position and just need that little bit of a reminder. I would also absolutely love to hear how you found this episode and if it did spark something in you that made you want to go out there and do this and explore play 
please definitely let me know. I absolutely love to hear from you guys and I love to hear how you find these uh, episodes and how they might have influenced you in some way. Thank you very much for listening. I will definitely be back with you again soon.